The configuration drop-down menu contains a lot of vital settings for data plotting, and we'll explore these in this tutorial. Uh, the configuration tab is the one that looks like a blue pencil on the toolbar at the top. I'll click on it, and we'll see that there are six sub-tabs that configure various parts of the plot. Okay, we'll look at each one now, starting with the axis tab. Now, the axis tab controls the setting of the X and Y axis, but other things as well. For example, you can uh, set the name of your plot in the Windows Title text box. Right now, the name of the plot is Untitled. Again, this appears in the Windows Title text box and also at the top of the screen, right here in the upper left-hand corner. Now, the Windows title is not the same as the file name but it will identify the plot for you just in case you have lots of custom screen interfaces, which uh, we kind of know that you will once you get the hang of how everything works. Okay, so let's name our plot My Plot and type it into the Windows title area. Now, here it is. We'll change it to My Plot. And when you hit enter, the, the title will be changed to my plot, and also you'll be able to see that up in the upper left-hand corner as well. All right, now before we go much further, let's start plotting again with our four channels of analog data. All right, to do that, what we want to do is we want to click on our connect icon, click on our plot icon, and then click on our plot erase or plot reset icon to, to have the plot start here at the uh, very left hand of the screen. And we'll bring our configuration a menu back up on the screen as well. So moving down the axis tab, we have uh, analog max and analog min settings. Uh, now these are for the Y axis. As you can see, analog max is 250 and the analog min is zero, uh, which are just the same as the top and bottom values on the plot axis. Right next to it, inside the configuration tab, is an example of a plot area to remind you what these setting boxes are for. All right, let's change the uh, analog max to, let's say, 600 and the analog min to 100 just to see how things work. All right, let's just enter 600 in the analog max window. Hit the Enter key. Notice that the Y axis changed to 600. And now let's enter 100 in the analog min key, hitting enter again. And once again, the Y axis at the bottom changed from 0 to 100. We can even enter a negative number like minus 100 in the analog min box. So we'll do that, minus 100, hit the enter key. Okay, now the Y axis goes from 600 to minus 100. But to be consistent with normal plotting, let's change the analog min back to zero and hit enter before we go any further. And now that we've looked at the y-axis, let's look at the x-axis. Now under the plot image, you can see that the time min and time max windows are there. And these define the starting and ending times on the x-axis, which is set to time right now. Uh, right now, they're set to 0 and 120, and since the seconds button is checked below, this means that the plot time will be between 0 and 120 seconds. But if the min button is checked, it means that the plot time will be between 0 and 120 minutes. In other words, it'll take a whole two hours for the plot to, prog to uh, progress across the screen, and it's probably something you don't want at this point. But before we get to that, let's change the values in the uh, time min and time max windows to something a little bit more reasonable. Uh, let's start by changing the time max from 120 seconds to 60 seconds. And that'll allow our plot to move across the screen that much faster. All right, let's do that now. We're changing that to 60 and hitting the Enter key. And notice that our uh, sine waves kind of stretch out to match the uh, new uh, time frame. Now let's change uh, that from 60 to 30 seconds. Okay, 30 seconds. All right. The uh, sine waves actually stretch out even more. So that's basically how to control the time axis. Another checkbox is the use log axis. 
Uh, it's just under the analog min window. The plot data in log format, just click on it and click on the set key. So we'll do that, clicking on the use, ax use log axis and click on set. And now we can see that our y axis and our grid lines are configured for a log type plot. Now we just wanted to show you this, that it's there in the configuration menu under axis but we uh, want to proceed with, let's say, a normal Y plot. So I'm going to uncheck the use log axis and click set again. So now we're back to uh, plotting in our normal uh, Y axis and time axis here. Now the next group of radio buttons I want to show you also involves the time axis. And right now we have the seconds button uh, checked. But to see what happens, let's click the minutes button and then click the set button. Okay, clicking minutes, clicking set. Now we see that the plot starts to bunch up at the left since we're now reconfiguring the time axis to minutes. So instead of 0 to 30 seconds, it's now 0 to 30 minutes. We can change the plot uh, to speed up things by doing a couple of things. Now first of all, we can change the time max from 30 to 1, meaning instead of 30 minutes, it's now going to be set to one minute, so let's do that. Okay, we're going to change 30 to 1 just by clicking the Enter key. And there we are. So the plot looks more normal, so it's really plotting the same kind of time that we did for seconds. Instead of saying 0 to 30, it's now, uh, let's say, 0 to 1 minute or 60 seconds. Now we can even change the time spread to something less by entering, let's say, 0 0.5. Okay, now we have half a minute or uh, 30 seconds on the uh, on the screen. Now going on, we can do the same thing with the hours radio button. And let's click on it to see what happens. So we'll click on hours and click on set. Uh, once again, we are back to our zero to half an hour or zero to 30 minutes. So we can now change our time max to something like, let's say, 0.0. .0 one. All right, let's see what that gets us. All right, if you really figure it out, 0 0.01 hours is uh, 36 seconds. It's uh, really 1 one hundredth of 3600 seconds, which is equal to an hour. Okay, so that is the minutes, or rather the seconds, minutes, and hours setting. Now let's take a look at the real time setting. Now just click on real time here and click the set button and bam, now we're at real time. And it shows the uh, date uh, at the bottom and the time in the more 24 hour time at the top. So to sum it up, what you have is a choice of seconds, minutes, hours, and real time. Uh, the next features are the grid lines and the axis labels and we can change these too. Grid line windows control the number of X and Y grid lines on the plot. Right now they're set at 10 each. In other words, 10 horizontal grid lines and 10 vertical grid lines. So to get a finer mesh of grid lines, let's start by increasing the Y grid lines from 10 to 20. So all we need to do is just enter 20 in the AY box. Click Enter or click Set. And uh, now we have doubled the uh, number of horizontal or, or Y grid lines. We can change the X axis to the same by entering 20 in TX, which basically stands for time or the X axis. Either hit enter or hit set. And now we have 20 grid lines in both directions. Now, later we'll see why adding more grid lines is important when we plot digital data. So finally, let's enter a, a label for the y-axis. Now this is usually something like volts or pressure or some other quantity that we're plotting. However, since our sine wave analog data really has no units at this point, let's just uh, label the y-axis as uh, analog. So what we want to do is just type in analog right in here. A-N-A-L-O-G. Hit the enter key. And we notice that the Y uh, axis is now labeled analog. So we can enter something else in the time axis, the one below, but Makerplot normally defaults to the correct time reading. So let's leave this as it is for now. 
Just remember that you can change the x-axis label, especially if you're not going to be plotting time-based data. So anyway, let's briefly review what we've learned. We can change a wide variety of configuration parameters with the Axis tab. The thing to remember, though, is that none of these settings are permanently saved unless we do a macro build and save the plot to a new file name. Now, right now, these settings will work as long as we don't get out of the no frills plot. We'll learn how to save all of these settings later on in the Learn video tutorial series. But uh, we just wanted to introduce you to the beginnings of the configuration tab here and the access part of it.